Okay, in this brief tutorial, what we're going to do is install a basic DHCP server on OES Linux. Um, version that we're going to install is 11. So underneath YAST, go ahead and look up Open Enterprise Server Installation and Configuration. I've already installed eDirectory, iManager, NSS. Um, eDirectory is a requirement for this. iManager and NSS are not. So we'll go ahead and launch this. It'll come up to the software configuration and we're going to go ahead and select Novell DHCP right here in this checkbox. We'll accept that and after we do that it'll install it and then it'll launch the Mikasa configuration which will allow us to configure the service before it is installed. By installed I mean configured. Alright, inside of Mikasa we now have the opportunity to opportunity to configure the DHCP service so we'll scroll down select it and we have to put in our tree password and we're going to basically keep almost all the settings as is um, I just double check everything so this first screen everything is okay um, I, I have a really flat tree I'm going to put it in my topo uh, most people will put it in like an OU called DHCP or something and that's something you may want to consider but again I'm doing a very very basic setup just to show a minimal amount of stuff that has to be done in order to get the DHCP up and running um, I'm going to go ahead and leave everything else here alone because it is correct now on this screen I am going to deselect all of my NIC cards except for my bond zero which happens to be my private interface that's the only interface I want DHCP to be listening on and we'll click next and we'll let this configuration complete should be really quick it'll end up creating a DHCP server object in the tree along with other support objects that are necessary such as like the proxy user and possibly uh, group objects um, once that's complete, we will go ahead and configure this. Alright, and in order to configure this, we will, not, we will not be using iManager. However, we will go and download the DNS DHCP Management Console. You have to excuse the slowness of the background that I'm remoted into this box that I'm recording. So if I go into Client Software, sorry, let me go back to show you where I'm at. If you go to HTTPS and then your server IP address or your DNS name, you'll come to this screen. Um, you'll go to Client Software. Go ahead and accept this certificate. And then you'll have available downloads. And you may have to scroll down to see this, but currently, based on my current configuration, I have available downloads to for the DNS DHCP console 32 and 64 bit versions for both Windows and Linux so I'll go ahead and download that okay so when you install the actual uh, DNS DHCP Java management console and launch it you'll see a screen similar to this what I'm going to do is put in my uh, IP address or DNS name Port 636 is fine. CN equals admin. Use SSL is fine. And I'll go ahead and click OK. And this should log into my server. Um, on a different screen, I prompted to accept this certificate. Now that I'm logged in, you'll notice that the DNS and DHCP for NetWare are, are grayed out. Um, I don't have any options there because I don't have anything installed in my tree for those options. Now, if I come to the DHCP Linux tab, you'll notice that I have nothing in here other than maybe the server on the bottom. So the very first thing that I'm wanting to do is go, go into the settings of the server. I'm going to click Modify, and we're going to add a, the authoritative statement. Um, the authoritative statement is not added by default in case somebody brings up a rogue DHCP server, um, but if this is going to be the actual DHCP server for your subnet or your environment, you do want authoritative in there and you do want it set to true. It is also possible to go and put this in the DHCPD.conf. Um, the next step, we have to go ahead and, uh, well, let's go ahead and save that. Go and click the 
create object button up here at the top we have to put everything underneath a service so we're going to go ahead and create a service object um, I'm going to just call mine DHCP service for lack of any creativity um, the container that I'm going to put it in again I'm I'm keeping mine very flat my tree so I'm going to put it in my topo and then the next option is select the server that we want to assign as the default server for the service so we'll go ahead and create this object now that we've created this object you can go in here and configure options if you would like such as subnets name DNS servers all the DHCP options routers name servers um, SLP options whatever um, but you can also configure them at lower levels at, at a more refined scope and that's the way I prefer to do it so what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new object with my service highlighted we're going to go ahead and create a subnet now whether or not you are listening on a particular subnet okay for instance I'm listening on a 10.10.10 .10 network um, if I was going to be handing out let's say a 192.168 subnet and uh, another 10.0.10 .10 subnet um, I would still have to declare a subnet for my current listening um, NIC. So for instance I'm on a 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 network I would have to create the subnet. That doesn't mean you have to hand out addresses for it but once you create the subnet then your service is allowed to start up if you do not create these a subnet for whatever interface you're listening on it will get complain about it and give you grief so you have to create that at a minimum um, what I'm going to do though is I'm going to happen I'm going to give out addresses on this subnet so I'm going to go ahead and highlight the subnet and we're going to create a pool the pool name for lack of a uh, any creativity again is my pool and the screen kind of gets a little squatty and you can't see these digits very well but I'm going to go ahead and put in a range of let's put in 50 to 60 and hit create now if we expand this you'll see my pool has been created if you highlight it you see your start address over here on the right from 50 and address is 60 um, we're not doing any DDNS or anything right now so this is just the basic setup um, I tried to expand that to look at the hosts I haven't got that configured there's a document out there that tells you how to configure that it will not be covered in this particular tutorial so again back to the basic setup I'm going to go to my subnet and go to configured options and we're going to go ahead and configure some basic options a subnet mask so we'll say okay to that let's go ahead and add another option the router and you maybe want some domain name servers option six let's go ahead and click in here give it a public DNS server also and this is very basic um, so that's that's good enough for what I'm doing right now so we go ahead and uh, go over to our server and bring it up and go ahead and bring up the DHCP service let's go ahead and say restart because I configured everything correctly it did start um, we will test it just to prove it but let's just make sure it's still running Let's go ahead and make sure it's set to boot up. You notice that DHCPD is currently set to off, so we're going to enable that. Notice now that it's on for run levels 3 and 5. Um, notice also that when I restart the service, it is called Novell-DHCPD, um, but the service is actually DHCPD. Um, so it's just aliased. RC Novell DHCP 
novel dash dhcpd. Let's do a status and make sure it's listening. We're going to tell f our var log messages. And we will see our DHCP uh, requests and everything come in, in, into this file. Let me go ahead and expand that just so we can get a better view of it. Now I'm going to go over to my Windows 7 box and power it up. It's just go ahead and resume it. And what we'll do is we'll release and renew. Let me go ahead and bring up the server in the background. It looks like we're getting a lot of other garbage besides um, some of the normal logging, which I may pause and uh, troubleshoot for these testing purposes. Okay, so we're back. I stepped away from lunch, so hopefully uh, the continuity of this tutorial hasn't changed at all. Basically, what I'm going to do now is go ahead and test our DHCP setup as we have it. Um, I'm underneath var log, and I'm going to tell f our DHCP d dot log on our server. Hit enter a few times after we're doing the tell f on that. And what I'm going to do is go over to this Windows box and type ipconfig slash renew. Now, if you look right up above under local area connection 2, you'll notice that we don't have any address. That's because that's the interface that is going to be requesting a DHCP address. Local area connection 1 is the one that has my static address on the public IP uh, assigned. So if we renew this, you can see our discover, offer, request, ACK is in our uh, log here and the informs whatever everything's done at this point and you can see that we received an address 10 10 10 50 um, with our gateway as configured and our net mask and if I type IP config slash all I might have to scroll up a little bit you'll also see the other section that I configured which is the DNS servers um, if I right click and mark, I guess I can highlight that. So the, DH, the DNS servers are selected here. We've got our address, we've got our net mask, and that is a very basic DHCP setup. Um, you can get more complicated from there, but it, it, there really isn't a whole lot to get it, get it up and running. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thanks for watching.